Welcome back to this episode of the Deep Penetration Podcast. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Danny, and I'm a love and self-esteem coach that works specifically with the LGBTQIA plus community, um, usually with gay and bisexual men, but I like to open it up to anybody within the community who is looking for some support or some guidance. And a lot of the things that I touch upon um, in this podcast has to do with self-identity, self-acceptance, navigating uh, relationships, trying to build and cultivate healthy, long-lasting relationships, and honestly just packing a lot of the stereotypes that we find within the queer community. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that I've come to find over the years, even, even when I initially came out, right, which was a while ago, was that there is discrimination within our own community as well. And as sad as that is, I wanted to create a place, a resource, a tool for people to be able to talk about things that sometimes don't feel like you can really talk about, right? So <clears throat> that being said, I wanted to jump into the subject for today, which is commitment. And <laughs> I feel like this is a, it's a bit of a loaded subject because I feel like commitment is one of the biggest issues within the queer community. Not the biggest, but one of them. And I hear it talked about all the time in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with my friends, people that I meet, you know, about the difficulties of finding um, commitment in, in relationships. Um, it may start out great and things seem to be going amazing for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and then breakups occur or the discussion of open relationships comes on the table and and things kind of start to unravel a little bit. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that having an open relationship is a bad thing because if the two of you agree to that, that is totally fine. What I am talking about is the ability to be in a monogamous relationship with somebody long term or even just generally commit to trying to be in a relationship with somebody because I feel like the 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 standard at this point is is casual dating. So I wanted to to talk about this because I think number one, it's incredibly important and it's something that should be talked about. And number two, if you are finding that this is something that's plaguing your dating life, um, then hopefully some of this information will be helpful to you. So let's talk about just the fear of commitment, right? So if you are somebody who has a fear of commitment. Um, when you finally make the decision to put yourself out there, you are making a conscious decision in that moment to commit. And you, you may not see it that way, but converting a thought into an action requires a commitment. And in my personal experience and, and through the work that I have done over the years, I have, I have come to believe that commitment is on a spectrum, right? Um, on one end of the spectrum, basically, you have like total non-commitment. And on the other side, you have absolute commitment. And even though I believe commitment is on a spectrum, I have yet to meet a single person who was absolutely non-committal, you know, even monks that that dedicate their lives to to practicing detachment and are are committed to their life's purpose, they still commit to that practice, right? So I think it's important that we discuss the main areas most people struggle with commitment. And the ones that I have come to find as a coach over the years is one, romantic relationships, two, education, right? Figuring out what it is that you want to do with your life, career choice, essentially. Um, the other one is is purpose, um, feeling like you, you know what it is that you want to do and you commit to that on a daily basis. It does not necessarily mean that it has to be from an educational standpoint, just generally speaking, what are the things that fulfill you and how you envision your life and your, your role right in the world. And the next one is health, nutrition and health. And I see this all the time with people where people want to get in shape, they want to be healthy, they want to do all of these things and they jump on the bandwagon and you're on the bandwagon for a solid month or so and then you fall off the bandwagon and you have to start all over again. So these are usually the areas that I find people struggle with when it comes to commitment. And these primary areas 
all share something in common and they directly impact your self-esteem, right? The way you view yourself, your self-worth. So to succeed or or fail in any of these areas would would basically directly impact your value and therefore committing to something that could potentially end in failure is incredibly scary and and no one wants to fail right especially in areas that society has classically conditioned us to believe we have to succeed at to bring value and as a queer individual or as queer individuals a majority of us grew up in a heteronormative environment. So our perception of normal was the dynamic that we saw between a man and a woman or our parents. And for myself, I grew up in a more uh, traditional Latino household and attended private Catholic school my entire life. Um, And I experienced a whole ton of intense bullying um, throughout elementary and middle school. And those environments molded my perception of normal, which was that I had to marry a woman and have children and achieve the American dream of owning a home and being overly religious and, you know, attending church every single Sunday. And the problem with that is, is being queer, um, you... (laughs) You can imagine how difficult it was for me to to fully embrace that dream. So what ended up happening is I grew to believe that there was something wrong with me, something wrong with myself. And if I failed at that heteronormative lifestyle, it wasn't society that had failed me. It was it wasn't my parents that had failed me. It wasn't my religion that had failed me, right? It was me that had failed them. So I committed to living this this straight lifestyle. That and that was basically my first experience with with continually failing at commitment. You know, you don't you don't always realize it, but when you finally decide to come out, it it isn't only a, a celebration of a new life, right? That you're embracing. It's also a grieving of the life that you let go. And you might be saying to me right now, listening to this, like, are you crazy? I was super happy to let that part of my life go. And look, yes, you are letting go of an identity that caused you turmoil and pain and frustration and anger, but you also can't negate the fact that it also brought you protection. And you took on that identity for a reason. You know, as humans, we are, we're wired for self-preservation and survival. So your decision to remain closeted was for the purposes of survival. And that identity allowed you to remain a part of a community, whether you felt like you identified with that community or felt safe in that community. Regardless, it still allowed you to partake and be a part of that community, even if you felt isolated. So the question for me now is, how does this impact your romantic relationships? And if you were like me, commitment failed you, right? Your experience with commitment was disingenuous in the sense that it did not align with your authentic self. And once you decided to finally come out, if you do not take the time to grieve what you are letting go of, it becomes a part of your subconscious and it plays itself out in many different ways, particularly with commitment in long-term relationships and romantic relationships. And what I have come to find is that As queer individuals, um, especially men, we have a tendency of going one of two ways. So one, overly anxious in our relationships or avoidant in our relationships. And both of these stem from the fear of failure and, and contribute to certain attributes or characteristics when you, you, well, What I'm trying to say here is that those characteristics contribute to a a a perfectionist mindset, right? And one of the biggest things when it comes to being a perfectionist is the fear 
a failure. You are a perfectionist because you feel the need to be in control of your environment all the time because you feel that you have the ability to control the outcome. But again, that's just a false narrative. So how do you get over this this fear of commitment? Number one, you have to grieve your former self, right? Taking time to to truly process your coming out experience is crucial in your ability to let go of these limiting beliefs. And often we leave that person behind and move on. But just like you left your former self behind, you also leave your partners behind and move on. And we we lived in a state of discomfort for for so long that when we finally let that lifestyle go we consciously or subconsciously vow to never be uncomfortable again and therefore you run in the opposite direction at the first sign of conflict in your relationship right having compassion for the form, for your former self will help you to to gain empathy which is a crucial part of building a healthy and successful relationship. The second thing here is challenging your confirmation bias. And if you do not know what that is, um, basically a confirmation bias is a tendency to to process information by, by seeking and interpreting information that is consistent with your own current beliefs. And often... For a lot of people, it's subconscious, which is probably why you allow yourself to believe when a relationship doesn't work out that it wasn't meant to be, or you weren't looking for anything serious anyways, or everyone in the community is non-committal. But you don't even realize that your current confirmation bias is perpetuating a reoccurring outcome. So by breaking this cycle, it's, it's, well, breaking the cycle is going to be crucial, right? And your ability to overcome your fear of, of commitment. Um, the third thing here is accepting failure. Look, the perfect relationship or the, per- that perfect person doesn't exist. Love can be painful and you can, you can't predict the future. We have, basically we've been conditioned over an extended period of time, um, to believe that failure devalues us. I'm going to say that again. We've been classically conditioned to believe that failure devalues us, when in reality, what it does is it actually increases our value. You know, if your life was only filled with success, it would make it very difficult for you to relate or empathize with people, and you would suck at conflict resolution because you would also be used to winning. So you would lack the ability to practice true gratitude and and your vision of the world would be incredibly skewed. Failing is probably the most human thing that anybody can do and it builds character. The fourth thing here is practice small commitments, right? It doesn't have to be anything crazy and I and I always it always drives me crazy when I'm I'm talking to people and we're talking about creating small commitment or creating commitments and people have this this common misconception that that means that you have to go big or go home and that's why you're failing you're taking on too much too soon you know small commitments micro commitments one step at a time one day at a time one hour at a time is what makes the difference. It's it's not overwhelming in that way. But if you go from zero to 100, you're going to burn out super fast. So in my one-on-one sessions, I oftentimes find that people view commitment as like a life sentence, right? And that's just simply not true. You you are looking at it on, on more of like a macro level, right? A bigger picture level. Um, and usually what I hear is, you know, I have to commit to my relationship or my partner. And that isn't where your focus should be. It should be on making small commitments to yourself every day and executing them. So for example, commit to paying that bill you've been putting off. 
Commit to going on that walk you've been putting off. Commit to to planning a nice dinner for you and your partner. Commit to, to talking to your partner about a disagreement that you guys had that you've been sweeping under the rug. You know, committing to smaller actions daily takes it from being this like amorphous thing. You have no idea how to approach to something more tangible. And that is you putting in the work. That is how you maintain and grow a healthy relationship with your partner and with yourself. I think it almost feels like the conversation around commitment has just kind of become this this joke right where it's like oh yeah that's like the the unicorn that most people will never find in their life you know like commitment is like the search for for bigfoot <laughs> Like you hear about it and you hear that people are looking for it and you hear stories that somebody found it, but then it was a lie. It didn't happen. So you come to believe that like commitment is not going to happen for you or you are so strong in your resolve to commit to a person, a relationship, your partner, that you suffocate that person because once you have them, you want to make sure that you don't lose them. Um, but the reality about commitment is it's about making a single choice, right? Saying, I'm going to put the effort and the energy into this person and trying to build something with them. There are going to be ups and downs. It's never going to work out the way that you expect it to work out. But if you are willing to go on that journey, if you're willing to take a chance, if you're willing to allow yourself to be vulnerable, which is a totally different conversation because vulnerability is a big issue that I have come to find um, within the the queer community, particularly um, with the the men that I've worked with. It's going to, it'll pay off. You know, I, I, I could sit here and try to come up with all these fancy words to express it or to explain it. But at the end of the day, if you give yourself the opportunity to commit to something, it's very possible that it'll work out, you know, and your fear of committing because of failure is a failure in and of itself. So think about that one. Um, Here's another thing, and this is going to be my last point before we end the episode. I heard this on TikTok, actually, um, or the Tic Tac, as I like to call it, since I'm 35 years old and I feel like I'm a dinosaur sometimes. Um, <laughs> but there was there was a person who was talking about her therapy session and he said what she said was that her her therapist told her that relationships are like a heartbeat right you have a peak and a trough so they, it goes up and it goes down it goes up and it goes down it goes up it goes down and when people are looking for just straight like i want only stability i don't want anything to happen in the wrong in the relationship i want everything to be perfect i don't want anything to go wrong you're like this which means you're flatline you're dead Every relationship is going to have its ups and downs, but that means that that relationship has life to it. So allow yourself to experience it. Allow yourself to ride out the peaks and the dips. Allow yourself to, to trust in the person that you're with that the two of you can get through this together. And if two people can come together and do that, you are un stoppable. I hope you guys found this episode to be um, informative, insightful, inspirational, educational, whatever it is that you found it to be. Um, please make sure that you are uh, subscribing to the podcast. It really helps the, the podcast and it helps me to continue to do what I do. Um, I always also like to add some questionnaires and some polls to the podcast episodes. So please make sure that you head over and you answer those. Um, 
And yeah, you know, I, I enjoy my time with you. Thanks for joining me for a chat and I will see you in the next episode.